Duodenal atresia is an abnormality in which there is blockage at the beginning of first part of the small intestine called duodenum. What causes duodenal atresia? There is no known cause, but it can be associated with other abnormalities. Approximately one third of the babies with duodenal atresia will have chromosomal abnormality known as Down syndrome, also called trisomy 21. The reported incidence of duodenal atresia is 1 in 6,000 births. The double bubble sign represents the dilatation of the stomach and the duodenum. This configuration most commonly occurs with duodenal atresia and in annular pancreas. An annular pancreas is almost always associated with duodenal atresia. Here also we can see the double bubble sign. Here we have supine radiograph of an abdomen demonstrating a dilated stomach S and an accompanying dilated proximal duodenum, the D. There is no gas in the bowel distal to the dilated duodenum. This is called double bubble sign and usually indicates the presence of duodenal atresia. Because of this blockage, the baby is unable to swallow water and as a result, the amount of the water around the baby is increased, what we call polyhydramnios. This condition is rare and occurs in around 1 in 10,000 births. How is fetal anomaly with duodenal atresia managed? Patient is advised another ultrasound by fetal medicine consultant to make sure that there are no other abnormalities associated with this condition. Then the patient is offered a test to check the baby's chromosome. At this stage, the test will be an amniocentesis. What happens next will depend on the result of the chromosomal test. If the chromosomal study is normal, the patient is asked to see the pediatric surgeon as well as the neonatologist to discuss the management of the baby after the birth. If it is abnormal, then she will have options to terminate or continue with the pregnancy. Does duodenal atresia recur? This is unlikely to recur if it is isolated. By isolated, we mean that it is not associated with either structural or chromosomal abnormality. But if we detect any structural or chromosomal abnormality, this may influence the recurrence risk. And in such case, liaising with a geneticist will enable counseling about the exact recurrence risk of the genetic or chromosomal abnormality. Now for the delivery of the baby with the duodenal atresia, I would like to say that it should be possible for a pregnant woman to deliver her baby in a normal way unless there are other reasons for requiring a cesarean section. The question is where to deliver a baby with duodenal atresia. The recommendation is to deliver in a unit where there is an expert to manage the baby after the delivery. How to care newborn with duodenal atresia? Because of the block, a mother may not be able to feed her baby after delivery as it will vomit. And this may cause severe problem in the lungs including infections. Consequently, the baby will have a drip through which fluids containing nutrients will be given until the baby has had corrective surgery and is able to feed. Now, duodenostomy is the common surgical procedure for duodenal atresia. Here, the surgical bypass for the duodenal obstruction is done by side-to-side duodenostomy. Associated malrotation should be corrected and that is called the LATS operation. In this procedure, the megadudinum or anastomotic dysfunction can occur. Another procedure is duodenojuginostomy and it is, it is only performed if duodenojuginostomy is not possible due to certain reasons. It has got equivalent outcomes but more post-operative complications. Now, a little bit we should know about the pathophysiology of duodenal atresia as well, in which there is failure of canalization of duodenal lumen that result in improper formation of the vacuoles. As a result, atresia or web may occur. 
and there is accumulation of the gases and secretions about the blockage so thank you so much that was all about duodenal atresia subscribe on ops and gynae allah hafiz